Hello everyone, praise be to God, and welcome back to Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories Reverse. Rebirth. Whichever one you want to call it. So, as you can see, we are continuing Riku's story today, and we've got four cards to choose from for our next world. Let's get going. Thank you, Riku. Let's get going. So his cards are going to be different than Sora's. So we do have Agrabah, we also have Traverse Town, Neverland, and Monstro. Interesting variety. So I think I mentioned it last time. When you pick the world for Riku, there are really a couple things you want to keep in mind. One is the boss card that you will get at the end of the world. Because remember, boss cards get added to all your other decks, so if you defeat the boss in a world, you will get that boss card for the other worlds. The other thing you want to take into account are the quality of the enemies you're fighting. If you're fighting really annoying enemies, you probably want to fight those first so you don't have a massive world with a ton of really annoying enemies. And also the deck you were given. So taking all this into effect, I'm going to do Agrabah first. You get a pretty good deck here, but the thing is, the Jafar card is really, really useful, especially for later worlds where your deck is kind of lame. And also, there are lots of fat bandits here, and they're kind of annoying to kill, so we're doing Agrabah first. R Welcome, Riku, to Agrabah, city of mystery and enchantment. And the hottest merchandise on sale today, come on down. Alright, so we've got a pretty nice deck. We've got a high potion on our deck now, so if we use Slates as Dark Riku, we can get them back with that. And our enemy card for the world is the Fat Bandit. Increases damage when hitting enemies from behind. So you, we now have two cards that increase our damage. The Dragon Maleficent card does not increase our power as much as the Fat Bandit, but the Fat Bandit only increases damage when we're actually hitting enemies in the back. I will mostly be using the Fat Bandit card in this world, especially when dealing with Fat Bandits, since that's the only way to damage them, is from behind. And also, the Fat Bandit card lasts for two reloads. Oh look, speak of the devil. Oh yeah, we also have King Mickey cards now. Not to be confused with the Mickey Mouse cards you get from bosses. King Mickey will restore your HP, reload your deck, and damage all enemies. He's pretty good. Way better than Donald and Goofy. Wow, we've got a lot of enemies that we're fighting. So let's show off what Mickey does. Kid Mickey! He also stuns the enemies. If you can stack three Mickey Mouse cards together, then that's really good. Lasting Days, nice. So when you're playing as Riku, the, the, the King Mickey cards are pretty much the only way uh, you have of restoring HP in battle. So that's important to keep in mind. Oh, Air Soldiers, who could forget about these guys? Alright, I'm switching over to the Dragon Maleficent card, because I'm not really noticing a lot of difference in the power of that versus the power of the Fat Bandit. Fat Bandits go down in two combos regardless, and the Dragon Maleficent card helps me for other enemies as well. So yeah, you've probably noticed by now the little uh, counter that's below Riku's head in the upper left corner. That's our current dark point, so if you take damage, you gain one dark point. And then if you break an enemy's card, you gain dark points equal to the amount, of, uh, the amount that you broke it by. So we've got 29 now, so if we break his next attack... We'll get 30 and that'll turn us into Dark Riku. Come on, man, attack already. So now we're Dark Riku. We're faster, we can jump even higher, and our dodge is amazing now. So if we put these two uh, free cards together, we get a value of 17. That's enough for Dark Fireaga, which is very powerful. See, so yeah, Ansem's like, you can use that power if you want. You don't have to, though. It's like, but here's the feign. Ansem, it forces you into dark mode after a certain time if you keep breaking cards. Let's upgrade our DP more. I want to get our DP at least to 30 throughout this game. Alright, let's check out the size of Agrabah. Yeah, pretty darn small, as you can see. And again, there's only the key of beginnings from now on in every single world. One or a higher. Sleeping darkness, why not? 
Dark Riku, anyone? And Dark Riku's combos are just much more powerful and aggressive than regular Riku's. But again, every time we take damage in Dark Riku's mode, or every time we lose a card break, we lose DP. So if we take damage, I believe we lose 1 DP, but then if we lose a card break, then our DP goes down by however much we lost the card break by. Which is why breaking enemies' attacks with slates is a very good way of quickly entering Dark Riku's mode. But again, for common enemies, Dark Riku is not even necessary. Alright, this looks like a great time for the back attack card. Not for a level up, let's boost HP this time. I've also noticed we have no zero cards in our deck. Alrighty, all the enemies are cleared out and we should be right- oh, never mind. Forgot about these guys. Alright, that was easy. <laughs> that was way easier than in Sora's story. Sure enough, our one crown door lies through here. Free or higher red, let's use Almighty Darkness. Because that does not affect the boss fight. And now we get to fight Jafar. Now for this boss fight, I might intentionally break some of his cards just to hurry up into Dark Riku mode. Maybe. I almost forgot. Riku's high jumping abilities do help in this fight. Because Iago likes to fly really high up. Oh, yay! We get to show off the Mickey Mouse card for this level. Uh, maybe. <laughs> or maybe we won't need to show off the Mickey Mouse cards. Oh, is that free key Mickey cards? I hope so. Okay, well, I definitely will have three now. Mickey Mouse Miracle Level 3. And that was enough to just kill Jafar outright. Mickey Mouse Miracle Level 3 is ridiculous, where it comp if fully heal heals your HP, reloads your deck of cards, heavily damages and stuns all enemies. It's amazing. And we get the Jafar card now, which is great. Let's boost our DP again. Now here's the thing, whereas Sora's story, once you beat the boss, you get teleported to the end of the world, not so in Riku's story. Now we've got to make our way up to that room. But this means that we can bypass the quarter room that's above us just by walking backwards. How nice is that? Pretty nice. Alright, two or higher. Stagnant space. So now I get the Jafar card, which if you remember, makes it so that when we play attack cards, enemies can't break them. For worlds where we have low-valued cards in our deck, that will be very helpful. Curse that bandit. Or big bandit, I mean. Dark Break! Dark Break's a fun one to use. Oh yeah, and D Riku can double jump when in dark form, which is nice. Man, the game's like, oh, darkness bad, but then it's like, well, but dark mode is also way more powerful than normal mode, so... That's kind of funny. I thought so. My turn. My turn. My turn. My turn. 
The stupid barrel spiders stop me from getting my hard-earned experience points. Oh yes, a Mickey Mouse card. Take that. Alright, final room of Agrabah, four or higher. Let's try for a Mingoing Worlds, why not? There was a moment's reprieve, alrighty then. And Riku's story has very few cutscenes, so he can just kind of run through it really quickly. I've identified the scent. It's Riku. Riku? But Riku is gone! He and that Keen were lost when they ventured beyond the door to darkness. How could he have escaped? Riku once shouldered the darkness. Perhaps that made him half dark. And that's why you mistook him for the superior. Fascinating. The dark power given to Riku facilitated his escape from the realm of darkness. One with ties to both the Keyblade and the powers of darkness. This merits further research. What I want to know is why Riku appeared here in Castle of Oblivion. Ha! That's simple! His existence resonates with that of another hero. Sora came, so Riku followed. Sora's in the castle? Yes, he and his companions arrived earlier. By now that dog Marluxia is already using Nominate to meddle with Sora's heart. Interesting. I had no idea. I don't think Marluxia plans to hand Sora over, but he can play his little game. If he gets Sora, then we need only require Riku. If he truly is like the Superior, then we will be untouchable. Uh ho. -huh. So they were, they already knew of Marmouche's plot. Very interesting. So we get, we do get some more depth to the bad guys, which is kind of nice. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. I'm Colorful Already. Told you these episodes would probably be shorter than Sora's stories. Tune in next time. I think we're heading to Traverse Town next. So look forward to that. Until we meet again, have a great day, and God bless.